This is a brief timeline of the daring bombing raid made on the Japanese homeland, April 18, 1942, led by Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. But first, a little background. In 1931, the Japanese Empire consisted of the Japanese home islands, the Korean Peninsula, and the island of Formosa, now Taiwan. The country had a highly developed industry, but lacked natural resources. So in September of 1931, Japan invaded Manchuria for its oil, rubber, and lumber. Then, in 1937, Japan invaded China to secure access to its raw materials, food, and labor. By the end of 1939, Japan had conquered large areas of China and most major East Coast cities. At about the same time, in Europe, Hitler invaded Poland. It was the start of World War II. On December 7, 1941, aircraft from a Japanese carrier task force attacked the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, inflicting heavy damage to the ships stationed there. The United States now entered World War II. Over the next four months, the Japanese conquered many of the strategic islands in the Southwest Pacific, including the Philippines, Guam, North Borneo, and Dutch New Guinea. By April 1942, Japan had reached its maximum expansion and started planning for an attack on Midway Island. Also in early April, the United States carrier Hornet with 16 B-25 Mitchell bombers on board, was sailing westward in preparation for a raid on the Japanese home islands, led by Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. The bombers line the deck of the Hornet as they prepare for takeoff on their Tokyo raid. However, there is concern that their early detection by a Japanese patrol boat may prevent the aircraft from reaching their planned landing fields in unoccupied China. Despite this, the Raiders still decide to continue with their mission. On April 18, 1942, the 16 Mitchell bombers were launched from the Hornet, each with a crew of five men. Their mission was to bomb military targets in Tokyo and other cities in retaliation for the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor and to show that Japan's home islands were vulnerable to attack. For security reasons, the top secret Norden bombsite had been removed and replaced by the makeshift device shown. It was designed by Captain Charles Greening, one of the raider pilots and had a material cost of 20 cents. Although the B-25s successfully bombed their targets, because of their early detection and early launch, they could not reach unoccupied China. Fifteen planes crashed in Japanese-occupied China, and one made it to Russia. Of the 80 crew members, 77 survived the mission. Eight were captured by Japanese troops in China, where three were later executed. President Franklin Roosevelt awarded Jimmy Doolittle the Congressional Medal of Honor for this brave and daring raid. After the war, there would be an annual reunion of the surviving raiders, and on November 9, 2013, the raiders held the last of their annual reunions. It was at the National U.S. Air Force Museum, where there were 80 goblets on which the names of all the raiders were engraved. Dick Cole, oldest of the four remaining raiders, opened a bottle of cognac, dated 1896, 
the year of Jimmy Doolittle's birth. It had been stored away for this final occasion. He said, Gentlemen, I propose a toast to those we lost on the mission and those who have passed away since. Thank you very much, and may they rest in peace. Retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Richard E. Cole, the last surviving Doolittle Raider, died at the age of 103 on April 9th, 2019.